Hi, I thought I hadn't posted anything really offensive or controversial in a little while, so I thought, uh, because I feel like it and because I can, I'd like to post some videos about why the British NHS uh, has been such a failure in so many ways. Of course, it's not a complete failure. Uh, not everything that's done in the NHS is of the NHS, if, if you understand what I mean, and I'll try and explain that over perhaps several videos. But yeah, the NHS sucks and should be dismantled. That's my sincere opinion. But to begin with, I want to look at the origins of the NHS. The NHS was established in Britain in 1948. Okay, in 1948 by a landslide Labour government which was packed with people of very hard left persuasions and I think now we can be reasonably sure that a lot of them were communist sympathisers, if not actually communists who had penetrated the Labour Party. In 1948, it was three years after um, the most devastating war uh, in the history of this of, of the world, basically. So the country was bankrupt. We had borrowed vast amounts of money from America to fund our war effort, and we were having to pay it all back. Um, we were exporting loads of stuff to, to find money to pay America, and food was rationed. Obviously, I wasn't alive then. I was born seven years after the NHS was founded. The NHS was set up by a hard left... Labour government at a time when many of these people believed that Stalin was building a worker's paradise in the Soviet Union because the committee, the people, uh, the people's representatives, the, um, the people's Soviet, whatever, knew best um, the old idea of capitalism and um, royalty and monarchy, hierarchy, this was all wrong with a new revolutionary world and we were going to build a better tomorrow. Um, H.G. Wells, the writer and um, uh, very strongly uh, left-wing philosopher, famously came back from the, the Soviet Union round about that sort of time and said, uh, I have seen the future and it works. And the, the people who built the NHS were strongly left-leaning socialists. At that time, in 1948, food was rationed. Cloth was rationed. The fashions of the day were designed to use absolute minimum amounts of cloth. A uh, piece of food was rationed, clothing was rationed, petrol was rationed as well, but that wasn't an issue because hardly anybody had a motor car. Um, so uh, people were used to deference. Uh, a huge proportion of the population had been in uniform in recent times, used to obedient, instant obedience to your superior. Uh, in the place where you lived, the teacher, the doctor, the parish priest or vicar, um, the policeman. These were all figures which were met with respect. The law was feared and um, people were used to obedience and doing what they were told. And it was into this, um, as into this background that the idea was taken, hey, we've got all these independent doctors. Doctors were having a, a relationship between their patients based on uh, willing seller, willing buyer. Well, of course, willing buyer. We'd all prefer to be given something for free, wouldn't we? And that was the big deception of the NHS, that it would be free. It hasn't been free, it never was free. It was based on uh, compulsorily deducted taxes taken away from people by the government and, um, and then this spent and distributed as the government saw fit. This is socialism. The difference between socialism and free enterprise uh, is instead of you having a choice, the government has a choice. You know, and you do as you're told, and you get what you're given, and you're grateful for it. So the, the NHS is based on three fundamental principles. It will be comprehensive, which it never has been, universal, which it has been, yeah, and free at the point of use, which it was for a very short time until prescription charges had to be introduced. So the, the, again, I'm going to say a lot more about why the NHS sucks so much. We've got some examples of it and discussions about how we can have a much better service for the same money without excluding uh, uh, poor people from necess receiving necessary treatments, treatments they need rather than treatment they want. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more later um, if I don't get flamed out of existence. But uh, the NHS was set up by a, a, an effectively communist government in 1948 at a time when 
it was still believed that communism was believed by many that communism was the way to go. It was set up at a time when people were used to rationing, a uh, time of poverty, and um, a time when people were used to doing what they were told. That was 1948. This system has some completely ceased to apply to the living conditions and the expectations that people have got in the 21st century. Uh, it doesn't work anymore, and the efforts to try to make a model that are non-functioning, the, the efforts being put in to make a model that doesn't work actually work is creating frictions within the service which are probably going to tear it apart anyway before very long. Um, and I'm not saying it's the worst possible system that could be imagined. Uh, it isn't the worst possible system that could be imagined. But I'd like to finish by saying this. The NHS has often been referred to as the envy of the world. Uh, if that is so, it may be the envy of the third world, yeah, which is why so many, one reason why so many third world people come to the cross oceans and continents to come to England to avail themselves of this service, because hey, it's a lot better than you can get in the Congo or parts of India if you're poor. Um, it's one of the reasons why Britain is actually such an immigrant uh, and a uh, so-called asylum seeker magnet. Um, but if it's the envy of the world, why have no other countries imitated our system? Because any of them could have done, none of them have. So the NHS sucks and it should be dismantled.